Thank you everyone for joining us for this webinar on network design. It's effective in a top-down approach presented by Kyle Barron. My name is Laura Lawrence and I'm the Global Marketing Director at Harman. A few things before we get started. Everyone on the call is muted to keep down noise levels during the webinar. However, there is a chat function where you can submit questions to the presenter and they'll try to answer as many questions as possible. This webinar is also being recorded and the link will be made available a few days after this presentation. We do have a number of other webinars taking place over the next few months for audio, video, lighting, and control, and we'd like to encourage you to take a look at the different webinars in our Learning Sessions Workshop Series that can be found on pro.harman.com, as well as visiting Harman Professional University to see our many on-demand and certification courses that are available to you for free. And now I'd like to introduce you to my colleague, Kyle Barron, who's presenter for today's webinar. Kyle has worked in the AV and IT industry for over 10 years, primarily as a system designer, system programmer, network engineer, and network designer. Currently, Kyle serves as a technical trainer for Harman Professional University, conducting training sessions for AMX SDSI products. And now I'm going to pass the mic over to you, Kyle. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody, to uh, the network design. Um, it's effective in a top-down approach. Uh, taking a look uh, at the uh, network design uh, tree, uh, if you will, from a top level uh, working down. Um, so I want to uh, I want to just talk real quick about the uh, uh, Harman Professional University um, and the uh, courses and classes that uh, we can offer. Um, very similar to this, um, we've got them uh, in a variety of uh, control, audio, video. Um, and it's pro.harman.com slash training. Um, I would encourage everybody uh, attending to uh, go check it out. Um, if you don't have an account, go ahead and, uh, go ahead and create one. Um, really gain some insight and some knowledge. Um, you know, as such, uh, when you do that and you take the, the courses and the classes, you're able to obtain um, the AVIXA credits, um, which is, uh, you know, a key for everybody uh, maintaining their standards. Um, you know, so currently, uh, because of the whole COVID-19 working from home, uh, we are offering a, a number of classes uh, remotely, um, uh, audio design, control design, uh, network AV, uh, some JavaScript programming, um, as well as a what we call a fast track uh, Netlinks programming. And uh, you can see these are the uh, the durations, so it's uh, two or one day, and then uh, the available Avixa RUs. Um, and again, you can check the uh, the training calendar um, for the availability of these courses. Um, and I would encourage you to uh, sign up and uh, join us for one of these. Okay, so um, network design. All right, why you ask? All right, um, you know you, you're probably wondering why is it important that you know I need myself as a designer need to be concerned with network design I'm not an engineer I'm not a network architect um, but the important of the matter is is that you as the as the designer are are ultimately in my you know the way I see it is responsible for the completion of the project right uh, for the the concept to be completed um, and you know uh, because of that you need to be aware of a multitude of different protocols um, and, and services that are on the network and that uh, you know are being incorporated. And because AV has met with IT uh, many years ago, um, we're all integrated and we all play nice. And there is more and more um, AV that is being pushed um, and placed onto the network and increasing that overall demand for uh, you know symmetry, so you know it's it's very important that you know we understand some of these um, and, and we leverage these you know network video, right? We're that we're we're pushing that uh, network audio, Dante AS67, um, you know AVB, you know those are all being placed onto the network. Uh, control, right? Um, you know using Netlinks. Um, you know, uh, to, you know, interact with uh, different devices, third party um, you know, lighting, right? Using a DMX and, and interfacing with, um, you know, the, the different lighting and control and moving back and forth. 
and, and then as well as just data traffic, right? So, um, you know, data traffic is is really anything other than what I've, uh, you know, the, the other four points that I've laid out, right? Um, you know, that could be uh, a customer's data network. Um, you know, that could be some other, uh, the internet, you know, just something other than, than one of the four uh, from above. So, um, you know, it, it's it's important that one of the big things that we look about this is from a strategy, from a strategic uh, point of view, and we want to look at this, um, you know, f from the top. So the reason that I say start at the top is traditionally when you when you think of when you think of a design, you always start with the hardware and you know kind of start at the hardware and work towards what the customer wants. Um, if you actually reverse it and start with what the customer wants and work your way down um, towards the hardware, you end up with a much more uh, streamlined solution that's hardened but also expandable. Um, you know, so some things that we want to look at here um, are uh, a, a, an integrated transport. Okay, so integrated transport is uh, a method. Um, if you will, of video, data, audio, you know, everything that's combined into a, a single uh, single means to get from point A to point B. Okay, um, you know, and, and we're integrating services, right? We 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 address the fact that you know we have Dante, we have AES67, um, you know, we have video, we have control, you know, all of these different uh, mechanisms that are part of a network that conduct transports of services, they're all integrated together. And then, you know, when we look at our actual applications, okay, that's going to be the endpoints that we're using. You know, for us, that's going to be, you know, such examples as SVSIs enable, okay? Um, you know, and, and we're, we're using multicast, um, which is a, a network transport methodology to, to move that data. All right, so, um, you know, a, a lot of this is all built around um, what's been known as SONA, all right, S-O-N-A, and that stands for uh, Service uh, service Originated uh, Network Architecture, okay, um, and, and that is, in fact, the new design um, method uh, that's being used um, when looking at these networks from a top-down. Okay, with functionality, scalability, performance, management, efficiency. Um, a lot of these methods and a lot of these concepts don't necessarily fully integrate into our world uh, of AV because, you know, well, you know we, we don't have servers, you know, we don't have web appliances, you know, we, we don't have all these different, you know, multifacet of, of, of the traditional IT space. But the underlying concepts still do play a key role. Um, so you know, if we if we look at, uh, at at a way to look at this in a six, you know, kind of a six step process here for some designs. So you want to prepare. All right. Um, this is uh, you know always the phase that uh, this is phase one is what I call it right, um, and, and this is where you're going to determine your your network's uh, requirements. Um, you're going to uh, talk to your customer. Um, you're going to formulate uh, a strategy, um, possibly some conceptual, uh, start conceptualizing what it is you're thinking of doing, um, lay it out on some paper, okay? Um, phase two is where we plan, okay? Um, this is uh, going to be a, a big benefit and a huge factor when you start talking about um, integrating into a customer's network, right? Going into a converged network, you're going to have to plan. Um, you know, you're comparing the existing network with a proposed network. Um, you're looking at a lot of how those are going to be different, um, you know, and similar, uh, you know, along those. Um, you're starting to set uh, tasks, responsibilities, milestones, your outlying resources that you're going to need to implement this. Um, and then the third one is is the actual design. So phase one and two, we really haven't done a whole lot of anything yet other than a bunch of brain work. 
um, the design is is where you clearly are articulating the details of your design. You are actually beginning to lay out um, pieces and parts, um, transport and media, how you're going to move things. Um, and then the fourth fourth phase is going to be that implementation. Okay, this is going to be where you you actually either integrate into the network, you stand up your own, um, you know, if it's a standalone, but you're um, you're actually turning up service, right? You are turning on service. Um, the fifth one is going to be an operation. Okay, this is going to be day to day. Um, you know, every day is is it, it's working, right? Um, most of the time on networks that are brand new, um, you're actually going to move into a sixth phase. Um, if it's a if it's a a sustained network, one that's been working for a while, you're probably not going to go to this sixth phase, and you will just stay at an operational phase. Um, however, the sixth phase is an optimization, right? This is going to be where we actually begin to optimize the traffic. Um, we're looking for any inconsistencies with the transportation of the services, any disruptions, bottlenecks. Um, you know, you might be looking for feedback. Um, you know, a lot of problems are identified right off the bat. Um, you know, the big thing with a network, you know, when it comes down to this is it, 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 it just works. I mean, you know, you either have it right or you have it wrong, and it will let you know very quickly, um, you know, if we've gotten out of order. Um, you know, the – so taking a look at the, the first few phases in a little bit more detail, um, you know, you as far as the design goes, you want to obviously identify those customer requirements, and this is going to sound a little mundane, um, but, you know, some of the things – that key pieces of information that we want to look for are what type of network applications are we going to be looking at or running? Um, what type of network services are they going to want to have? What is the goals, right? Ultimately, what are those goals? Um, what are constraints imposed by the by your customer, okay? Um, you know, those could be all kinds of things. Uh, do you have any technical goals? You know, some of the big technical goals that a lot of people have are just the ability to understand and design and build a network, right? I mean, that could be a huge one right off the bat. Um, or do you have any constraints, okay, that are imposed by those technical limitations? And then the last one, which is the most important one, is security requirements and challenges, all right? Um, those are, you know, that one especially is going to be a key um, for making sure that you have a successful and continued operation of your network. Um, you know, without, without those, especially that one, you, you could be in trouble pretty quickly. Um, but once you gather all of these and you've documented these, you know, the, you can you move into those those variant of phases, okay, that, that you can continue to move forward, right? So one of the big ones is protocols, right? Know your protocols. And, you know, the, the big one here is, is that these protocols will be impacting and traversing your network. Um, if you do not plan for these, you know, protocols and designs and, uh, you know, data to be on the network, you will absolutely cause and have the potential for disruption of network traffic. Either, either it will become very slow or it will just grind to an absolute halt altogether. All right. And, and, you know, some of those are going to be video, right? So network AV, you know, uh, is it JPEG 2000? Is it H264? Um, you know, motion wavelet, uh, you know, motion proprietary compression, MPC, you know, which, which one of those is that going to be? Um, you know, on the audio side, you know, what are we talking about? Are we talking about Dante, AS67, AVB, uh, CobraNet? You know, uh, do I have some high QNet left out there? Um, you know, how is that data, you know, as far as the audio goes, wh what am I doing? Am I using multiples of those? That could be important as well. 
you know, control. Am I using um, AMX ICS LAN for a separated network? Am I just using normal LAN? Um, you know, where are my touch panels? Which network are they on? Are they on this, uh, you know, where are they gonna sit? Uh, you're looking at lighting, right? Artnet, um, you know, or, you know, similar. You know, where's that gonna be? Do I have that? Um, is that on its own network? Is that going to be on a, on a combined network? And then is there any other data that I need to have on this network? Um, you know, is there any other things that are will be traversing this? Um, you know, you can, we can all run into problems when we start creating uh, network segments. If we don't plan it appropriately, we can impact a different segment that's out there, right? So the, the second part of this is the audit part, okay? So the second thing you wanna do when you're, when you're designing is you wanna conduct an audit, all right? So the purpose behind the audit is, is to look for existing uh, infrastructure, to look for existing um, devices, you know, the, so some of the big ones here are gonna be, you know, you're gonna to wanna to collect any network documentation. Um, you're, you're gonna to wanna to have a, a conversation with the, the organization's IT department and, all, and some organizations, big or small, are actually broken down into subgroups of that. Um, you know, sometimes you might have a security team. Sometimes you might have a routing and switching team. Um, they could even break it down farther and just go, they have a, they have a group that does routing and a group that does switching, um, which are two different things, right? So, you know, interview, you know, know and interview your stakeholders to know who to go to to get some of this information. Um, you know, so that you can uncover it and document it uh, going forward. Um, you know, you're gonna wanna, you know, conduct that audit to uh, look at different types of network traffic, congestion points, perhaps it's a suboptimal route, right? Um, it's a route that doesn't make sense where it goes from your space to two other buildings before it comes back. Uh, to you, right? It's just not optimal. And then, you know, you supplement all this information that you've collected, um, you know, by using a variety of, of auditing tools. You know, so some of these tools, um, you know, if you're dealing with Cisco, uh, you can use CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, um, Wireshark, um, any type of uh, network sniffer, um, you know, wild packets, um, NetFlow, um, SolarWinds, Orion, you know, all of these guys, uh, you know, have, have all third party, you know, uh, specially designed software to go and look, but you're not going to be able to use any of these tools potentially without knowing um, what type of security is in place because some of these might not even work. Um, as soon as they go to go onto the network, the network might detect, uh, you know, a packet sniffer. Um, or a network sniffer, and it, it might shut your port down. Um, so one of the big things that I always, you know, anytime somebody calls and asks for uh, assistance, you know, one of the things that I always, I always ask for uh, documentation-wise is a network drawing. Now, traditionally, there's two types of network drawings. You have a logical network drawing and a physical network drawing. All right, so whenever you're doing your design, you always want to ask for and try your hardest to end up with a physical network drawing. Here's why, and that's because as you can see from this uh, slide picture here, this is a logical network drawing, okay? So it doesn't look overly complicated, right? I mean, you know, it, it identifies the to and from, so source and host, um, in a one-to-one -one fashion, right? It's logical. When we actually, and, and when we go to look at this and we're talking about, you know, things as bandwidth or the amount of hop count um, or, you know, what our interconnects are gonna look like in between these switches, we, we look at this and we say, oh, well, it's, it's a straight through, right? It's point to point. Well, because it's a logical drawing, you are unaware of what actually is between that source and that host. 
So what you want to look for is a physical drawing. This is a physical drawing, okay? This is showing us um, from the source all the way through to the internet, okay? It shows us the different networks. It shows us the different switches, the different paths. It, it tells you what port they go in and out of. You know, that's actually a physical uh, layout and, and one that, uh, for the most part, IT IT departments keep pretty dear and, and pretty dear and close to their heart, um, but it's something that you need to work with them on. Um, you know, maybe if you just request for your segment uh, of the network so that you guys can know what's there. But these are crucial um, in designing a sufficient uh, network for anything, uh, not just uh, network video, but network audio control. You know, knowing how that data gets from one side to the other um, is, is very important, not, um, you know, not from a design, but from a troubleshooting standpoint, too. Okay. Um, so here we want to look at... Um, we, we want to look at the uh, kind of the the networking plan, right? So, you know, this is where the, the top-down really comes into effect, right? And, uh, you know, this is all based on an OSI, um, you know, model, if you will. Um, you know, and it, it's looking like, uh, you know, you start primarily at that application. You know, what are you trying to use, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, enable um, or, uh you know, we're, we're passing AS67 or Dante Audio, right? And then from there, just work your way down until eventually we can get down to that, that physical data link layer um, where we can start specifying, um, you know, switch infrastructure, um, you know, path links, you know. Uh, hey, at the end of the day, the big thing here is, is that, you know, are the customer's happy. Um, it's a solid solution. The, the customer is satisfied. It works um, that your uh, you know your your big picture, if you will, uh, has been defined um, and is is what you're presenting, right? Um, so a couple different uh, you know network designs, okay, and some terminology um, you know that that you guys might hear out there um, is is what we consider a traditional uh, three layer um, design, okay. Um, this is, uh, you know, the, the, the image here is a three-tier model. Um, this is a traditional design. Um, and, and what this is made up of is an access layer. Uh, this is typically what's in your, uh, your uh, IDFs, in your, uh, your edge uh, closets. Um, you have a distribution layer. Um, this is going to be an MDF, um, a head end, you know, something along those lines. And then you have a core, um, and the core is essentially, you know, the, it's the heart, it's the backbone of that network. Um, and, and this is how they're broken down um, in this three-tiered model. Now, um, the other type is what we consider a, a collapsed core. Um, now, this is only comprised of two layers, um, with the second layer um, having kind of dual function, right? So, you know, your access layer, again, typically sits in those those IDFs, the edge. Um, it's where, uh, you know, it, it, it's all of your AV devices. It's all of your, you know, peripherals connect to. That's going to be your access layer. And then from there, you move into your distribution and your core layer. Um, this is going to be where you have one switch that, you know, everything might, um, you know, connect to, um, and, and you're going to use it to uh, you know, distribute um, and route um, all your variant traffic uh, amongst each other. Uh, this could also be where um, the customer's network meets yours um, at that point. So the the difference here is is that the traditional three layer three tier um, is more built for large scale enterprise uh, traditionally uses these the collapsed core is small to medium size networks is where you're going to see these um, they're they're easy to manage 
Um, you know, most of them you'll see uh, as uh, you know, you can make one of these out of a uh, what's considered a layer three networking switch. Um, you know, you can get the functionality out, and most people typically do that. This uh, collapsed core, by far, is the most common that's used um, within uh, audio video. Um, you know, we don't have uh, we we don't have the the means to you know run everything through this three tier you know, architecture system, um, uh, you know, over, over the course of its life. Um, you know, some of the, a, a lot of times I get asked is on redundancy. Now, you know, redundancy um, is, is a wonderful thing to have. And, you know, more and more and more that we're becoming dependent on network AV, um, you know, in the network, people are asking for more redundancy there. The, the thing with redundancy, and, and this is an example here of uh, traditional, right, it's a three-tier network in a redundant mode. One of the big things off the bat that everybody notices is, is, well, you have double. Well, yes, it's redundant, but double also means the cost as well. So when you're designing one of these networks out that is redundant, you're gonna have two switches, you know, in your, uh, for access, two distribution, two core, um, and that's all fine. And you can make a network fully redundant. It all comes back though to that host device, right? That, that peripheral, that, uh, that master or that touch panel, um, you know, that SVSI uh, encoder or decoder. And that is, you know, how can we, you know, it only has one network interface, right? So uh, the, the ability for redundancy can only go so far. So it's knowing what those limits and what those timings are will help you um, in, in pushing forward uh, with the overall design um, and the variation. Um, the, uh, you know, so some of the other ones here are, are environmental factors, okay? Um, you know, the, the bulk of things for network AV are intra-building, right? Intra, okay, In, inside. Very, you know, I, you know, more and more now we're seeing data leaving one building and going to another or, you know, going from one building around the country, you know, to another location, right? Um, and we definitely have uh, solutions in place to be able to cover that, right? Uh, we've got a, an H.264 solution. So uh, effectively what we can do is um, we can transcode um, inside the building um, with one flavor of, of SVSI and, and we can output an H.264 um, to, you know, wherever, right? If you had a YouTube channel or uh, you know, something like that that you wanted to, to stream to. Um, you know, so some of the, the considerations here are, you know, intra-building, um, you're, you're going to want to, you know, make sure that uh, your, your cabling is to spec, right? So the good thing is, is that, you know, with network AV, it, it really the minimum is 5E, right? Um, most of today, everything is CAT6, um, but a minimum is, is typically 5E, right, because it's one gig, um, you know, obviously higher if you're talking about, you know, a, a different solution. Um, but you're, the, as far as the, the shielding or the, you know, the non-shielding, that really is going to come down to these environmental factors. Um, it's going to come down to your cable tray, what's in your cable tray. Um, it's going to come down to, you know, how close you are to power, right? I mean, that, that's all on the environment, whether or not you need a shield. Um, the, uh, you know, intra-building is, as far as the media type, is, is traditionally twisted, right? Um, you know, I mean, we're, we're twisted copper. You know, we are using copper there. Um, sometimes you'll get fiber, uh, whether it's multi-mode. Um, is usually what is inside of the building. And, and that's strictly just, you know, usually going from closets to closets, um, running the riser, right, um, you know, 
uh, tying things back in. Um, when we start getting into, uh, you know, the inter building, um, you know, so we're, we're moving, you know, within, within the distance of one another, um, this is where it's going to be, it, it's going to be fiber, right? You know, we're talking about that, you know, single mode, multi mode flavor, um, variation that we have going on there. Um, and then, you know, the, the last one there is, is, you know, looking at a remote building. Um, you know, obviously for a remote building, um, you know, it's a single mode. Uh, solution uh, for your fiber, um, you know, and, and it's for anything that you could be uh, running over a WAN, um, you know, could be doing something with, uh, you know, a MAN or a metropolitan area network, um, you, know, you, you know, anything along those lines. Um, you know, the, the SVSI um, series line for network AV, um, you know, offers both RJ45 version and a copper SFP um, as well as a fiber SFP, right? So, you know, we really get the extent of, um, you know, transport um, out, of the, out of the same box, you know. So if you had a device that was more than 300 feet, 330 feet away, you could always just run it with fiber as long as you powered it locally. Obviously, sometimes, you know, some people think that they can power things over a piece of glass and that still is not the case. It doesn't work. It would be awesome if it did, um, but it's definitely not. Um, our current solutions are one gig, so that is really the network that we design with in mind is one gig. Um, now, obviously, your uh, connection points, um, you know, your trunks, uh, or, you know, your stacks, if you will, uh, for switches, those are all going to be a lot higher than one gig, right? Because we need to make sure that we can move the appropriate bandwidth from point A to point B and move it successfully without any type of interference. And, you know, this goes back to the point of making sure that you have that uh, physical topology so that we can look at that and really determine what's there, what's not, um, what is available on the switch um, as far as port counts and what's not. That's all done in that, uh, in that audit mode so that we can go forth from a design standpoint and do these network bandwidth calculations, all right? So some of these network bandwidth calculations are simply done by, um, you know, you, you take your number of encoders, you multiply it always by the worst case scenario bandwidth number, and that gives you your total bandwidth plus 20%. Now, the reason for 20% is it's a bubble, right? It just prevents any sort of burst um, or anything like that on the uh, network um, for data-wise so that we don't oversaturate a port uh, by accident. So when we look at that, again, it's encoders times worst case number. Um, a lot of people, they don't want to use the worst case number in a design because the worst case number is big and scary. Um, but the problem there is, is that when you use a smaller number, you create more problems than you can even begin to imagine. Um, you know, you can end up with a situation where a customer begins to start expanding and adding just devices and they've outgrown the network. Um, you know, they've overrun the network. You've got way too much data out of the, you know, just out of the gate. Um, again, all environmental here. Um, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, if we can control what our client, you know, what our clients and what our customers do on a day-to-day -day basis with a, an AV system, um, you know, it, it would be very easy and very straightforward. And, and you know, the job of a designer is to anticipate um, and build room in for all of these, uh, you know, ancillary, you know, expansions, if you will, um, and, and that ultimately is what uh, is what we're doing. Um, so, you know, uh, with that, um, you know, using the top-down approach, first thinking about what it is that they want to do, and really capturing that, and then working that solution to actually beginning to pick out 
your your network switch um, to looking at your um, you know hardware and your interconnects in between. I mean that's a, that is effectively why um, it's better to start at the top than just start picking out some hardware and throwing it together and hoping everything ends up uh, at the end. Um, with that, do is there any questions or anything, Laura? Let me see here. Um, it looks like the only question one was asking if there would be a follow-up recording on the session, which yes, this is recorded and will be sent out in a few days. So other than that, there weren't any questions. Okay. Which means they've done an amazing job presenting the information. <laughs> well, thank you. We, um, you know, so I, I've got another, uh, I've got another uh, webinar coming up. I believe it's, uh, it's in a week or two, um, but that will be discussing uh, network security. Um, so, you know, I hope that uh, hope everybody will uh, join for that one as well. Um, and uh, we'll go over uh, network security and you know some pitfalls and stuff like that of uh, the AV space and what happens when things get left open. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Kyle, for the presentation, and everyone, thank you for attending. Um, if you're interested in viewing the full calendar of the upcoming webinars, that can be found on pro.harman.com. Thanks, and have a great day.